Today, we check out the GTEC 3D Wi-Fi add-on module. A while back, I received an email on an Indiegogo campaign that was for an add-on Wi-Fi module for a 3D printer. Turns out, the company that was creating this module was GTEC. I've had some experience with GTEC in the past, and with mostly positive results. So I thought I'd go ahead and pledge the $30, roll the dice, and see what they can come up with. A couple of days ago, I received my Wi-Fi module in the mail. And here's what came in the package. You get a module that has an SD card in it and a USB cable. You do have to provide your own power supply. For the module, I'm going to be using just your standard cell phone charger. It's 5 volt. This video is going to be a lot of cell phone screen share, which I've never done before. But this module is based around a cell phone app. So let's get it open, get it configured, and see what it can do. The first thing we'll do is we'll head over to the GTEC site and we'll grab the user manual for the module. This PDF appears to be pretty straightforward on how to get your module set up, so we'll walk through these steps one by one. I'm using an old Samsung S5 Galaxy phone, but it should work on pretty much any Android or Apple phone. So first thing I want to do is go grab the GTEC software. I'm going to head to the Play Store, search for GTEC, and then click on the Easy Print 3D app, and hit Install. Once it's installed, we can hit open. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to go down to the bottom right and hit the me button and go ahead and hit log in at the top. If you don't already have a GTEC account, hit the account button and then enter your username, your email and your password and hit register now. It will then email you a confirmation code so you can use this app. I already have credentials for GTEC, so I'm gonna enter them here and your password. Now that we're logged into the app, we need to bind a 3D printer. So hit the me button on the bottom right again. And then just click on the my printers where it says my printer zero, touch that. And hit the start to bind button. Hit the hand to manually enter your serial number for your printer module. You want to enter the serial number that is on the back of your Wi-Fi module. It is case sensitive. Once you've entered your serial number, hit next, then click successfully bind. Now we can go back and click on the print button down below. Now we have to configure the Wi-Fi. For this video, I'm going to use the Tronxy X1 because it was easy to grab and pretty portable. I did try the Monoprice Mini Select first and it did not work with this module. So cable up your module via USB to your printer and to the power source, the cell phone adapter that I'm using. Make sure the printer's powered up and your SD card's in, and then you're going to want to hold this set button with a pencil for about one second until the Wi-Fi light starts flashing really fast. If you hold it too long, that makes the module reset. That's what it looks like when it's ready to configure the Wi-Fi. Now go back to the app, hit the print button at the bottom, slide up, hit Wi-Fi, hit next, and you should have a Wi-Fi network called GT Printer in your list. Click on that, click Connect, GT Printer connected, we can back up a screen. Now enter your home wireless network information and your password. Then you'll click OK and the Wi-Fi config is complete. Click OK. When you click OK, that's going to disconnect you from the 3D Wi-Fi module and you might have to go back in and connect up to your wireless network. So go back into Wi-Fi and make sure you're connected to your usual wireless network. If the printer isn't connected yet, you might have to go into your settings. So up arrow, settings, and adjust the baud rate that the printer uses. This one is 11.5200. Click save. Then we can hit the back arrow. Now that the printer's online, let's try some test moves. Hit the double arrow, go to move. Let's try a negative X. Let's try a positive x, plus y, negative y, let's try home, the up and down z buttons are flipped. Let's try increasing the temperature on the hot end. It does make changes on the control box, but it does not reflect in the app. It doesn't reflect on the home screen either. 
let's see what filament change does. Go, let's go into filament. Let's set a temperature of 200. Hit OK. And we'll hit heat up. Again, it does change it on the LCD screen, but it does not change it in the app. The printer has reached temperature. Let's try the unload filament button. It moves the extruder around 10 millimeters. Not real useful. Let's take a look in speed. Let's try adjusting the fan speed rate. We'll set it to 100. It did turn the part cooling fan on full speed. Still is not reflected in the app. The leveling feature doesn't appear to be very useful either. Let's try G code. Let's just try a G28. G28 appears to work just fine. Let's try an M503. The window does not automatically scroll. So the information that it outputs is pretty much useless. So the features aren't that great. Let's see if we can actually do a print. Let's hit the play button. That takes you to the cloud gallery. Let's check out the SD card. We'll go into that card. So these are the files that are on the Tronxy X1 SD card. Let's try 3D Wi-Fi. This is some sample G code that's on the SD card on the Wi-Fi module. Let's go back to cloud. Let's find a model. We'll hit 3D print. And let's search for a Benchy. Doesn't look like our usual Benchy's there. Let's go for an 8-bit Benchy. Let's try print it. Print. We'll choose our Wi-Fi module printer. Apparently we need to add a printer profile. We'll do custom printer profile. Chunks EX1. Rectangle bed. 120. 120. 120. 0.4, no heated bed, we'll click save. No matter what parameters I try to enter, it tells me parameters not valid, so I can't enter a custom profile. Let's go with the GTEC E180 profile. It's pretty close to this printer. We'll use PLA, we'll hit normal quality, 100%, and we'll hit print. We're downloading the STL file. Sending print file to the module. And after about six minutes of waiting for that screen, nothing happened. Let's hit play again, and then go into the 3D Wi Fi and see if that file is on its SD card. There is the 8 bit Vinci. Let's hit the print button from here and see what happens. The printer is now heating. Still no feedback in the app what the printer is actually doing. The print has started, and it did change the to the machine is printing. The printer moved into position and then stalled. Let's try a pause. And we'll try to play it again. And nothing is happening. Let's try to stop the print. The printer did stop and now it's trying to cool down. I've restarted the app. Let's give it one more try. Go into print. We'll hit me. We'll hit login. We'll go to gallery. We'll hit 3D Wi-Fi one more time, expand that, hit print on the 8-bit Vinci. Nothing happened. Let's try it again. Print on the 8-bit Vinci. Nothing happened. So far this video has been pretty uneventful and we haven't had much luck. So in a last ditch effort to get this module to work, I pull out a genuine GTEC machine. This is my GTEC Pro B 3D printer. Surely the module will work on a GTEC branded printer, right? Let's find out. On the GTEC printer, it is reporting the temperatures. It appears every time I hit a move button, it has to auto home. Let's try for a print. We'll hit the play button. Let's go to 3D print. We'll go for the Benchy again. 8-bit Benchy. Print it. Print. We'll add the printer profile and we'll choose the Pro B. Save. PLA, normal, print. Again, that process did finish, but nothing really happened. So we'll go play button. We'll check out the 3D Wi Fi card. 8 bit Benchy, 
and we'll hit print. The printer has started to heat. It's only heating the bed at the moment. After the bed reached its temp, the hot end started to heat, and it has started to print. Of course, it's not going to run G29 for my auto leveling, but we'll see if it actually makes a print. So the printer did start printing, but it only made it to the second layer when the software jumped it down to 175C, and then it hit thermal runaway. So that didn't work either. We tried three different machines, and we failed three times. We tried our best, but still no positive results. I do apologize for the long-winded video with a not-so-great outcome. We could contact GTEC and try to troubleshoot these issues, but that's really not the point. The point was to open up this product and see what the user experience would be. Turns out, not so great. I do think I will take these issues up with GTEC at a later time. So let's assume for a second that it's a perfect world and this module worked flawlessly out of the box as advertised. Who's this module actually for? You're limited to blindly printing models off their cloud site. You're also at the mercy of their slicer settings, even if you could create your own custom printer profile. Yes, you could slice some files and manually load them on an SD card and then use this app to print those files, and that would give you some print job status monitoring, I guess, but is that really useful? I'm not sure what GTEC was going for here, but I think they completely missed the mark. My advice would be to use that money to get an Octopi set up that has 10 times the functionality and costs less money. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below. And as always, thanks for watching.